So the last wall that I built was for one of the ends, which accepts these two smaller windows, but I need to run to the lumber store before I can build this last end section. So I'm going to go ahead and start framing up the wall for this larger section. I've got to size my header beam and my opening for this window. So I'm going to measure the wooden internal frame, not from this plastic lip, mounting lip, but as you can see, probably on the edge of those windows, there's a wooden frame that runs around. So I'm going to measure that out, write that down. Oh, we got 35 and a half by 59 and a half. So I need to formulate or need to calculate you know, how much clearance I need and what size my header needs to be. So to avoid future problems, the paperwork says that your window opening should be plumb, it should be level, and they should also be square, along with being the proper dimension out inside dimension. So you have enough clearance for the wood to swell and contract. Maybe the building will settle a little. Otherwise, if your opening is too tight, the window is going to be sticky. We've seen that before, most of us. Or it could actually break the window you know, if the building settled a bunch on it. So we won't avoid all that. So here's a cool new tool that I just added to the shop. It's a DeWalt electric version power plane. And I opted for the electric version over the battery version simply because of price, right? It's quite a bit cheaper to get the electric version. And I have a lot of current use for one of these, but maybe not so much future use. So I didn't want to invest a whole lot, but I wanted to get a decent tool. So a middle of the road electric hand plane. Now I've been watching the YouTube channel Essential Craftsman and Samson Boat, both really good quality channels and I've seen the utility of one of these so I figured I'd pick one up and I don't regret it at all this is actually a pretty good tool and it removes a controlled amount of wood at uh, you know, with ease so new tool really like it don't regret it at all So in my last video, somebody brought up the uh, topic of thermal bridging and how I'm you know, not gaining a lot with the efficient windows, uh, having all these thermal bridges uh, built into the wall. All the really big headers, all the large king studs, etc. You know, that's a place where there's absolutely no insulation in between the outside and the inside of the building. But a two before or a two by six on its end, which you know is going to be how thick this wall is, plus whatever sheeting or whatever uh, uh, siding I do, uh, has some insulating value on its own. We're not in a really extreme environment here. We're kind of moderate, I guess, kind of you know middle of the U.S., middle of the eastern U.S. anyway here. So yes, we do get huge snows every ten years, a foot, maybe a little more, and yes it gets hot in the summer and yes it gets cold in the winter but for the most part we stay you know not at the extremes of either end uh, of the temperature scale and the rest of the shop's not all that uh, insulated anyway so it doesn't 
really matter all that much to be honest. It'll be good. I think it'll still be fine. So I believe technically this is considered a jack stud. It sits directly under the header and supports the weight of the header beam that runs over top of the window. Then this sits on the wall, this short wall like this, and then the load gets transferred down into the seal, which this sits on the top of the concrete wall. So we can see what I've done here is just put grain on end, pieces of two to six that just support the weight or transfer the load actually down directly into the seal. It's not necessary, I don't think. This is more than strong enough. But probably it would be best if this set directly on the seal. But then again, you know, this is probably orders of magnitude stronger than it needs to be anyway. So that's what I'm doing. In case you're curious. So I found that cutting this foam with the saw, table saw, was definitely the way to go. You gotta be extremely careful, obviously. Um, if you bind this stuff at all, it just melts to the blade immediately and then makes the rest of your cuts kind of kind of a pain. Just with any with any equipment, I mean, you have to be extremely careful and not get overconfident, especially with these whirling blade wood tools that are very capable of removing body parts within split seconds. So found this worked great. This is the insulation for my little stud wall, which I showed last week. But I had a lot of this stuff to cut, and this was the way to go. So the way that I'm assembling this is I'm just screwing it together somewhat lightly. In the beginning then I can manipulate it as square or change something if I make a mistake because I'm not a, a framer and then once I'm satisfied with everything you know I nail it together really good now I want to address the just the fact that this is way overdone and I'm very aware of that and the reason for that is because I don't know what this building holds or what the future holds for this building I could possibly put a bridge crane in here that is a possibility a small one um, the roof's not that high, but that could change. Anyway, I also have all this material. This is not extra cost to me. This was brought to me from my buddy Al, who had it for a project that didn't happen. And if I don't use this stuff, this lumber, it's just going to sit outside under a tarp, get eaten by bugs, and eventually be no good at all. So why not stick it in the wall and use it? and make this wall more than strong enough to hold anything that you're ever going to do. That's my reasoning. Uh, you could have got away with probably a 2 before wall, one 2 before jack stud, one 2 before king stud, and a header half this size. But, you know, I wouldn't have been happy with that. So I think this is, <laughs> it's a compromise, right? You're just, uh, there's nothing wrong with overdoing it because uh, if it's more than strong enough, it's always strong enough. Come on. It's okay. Got some peanuts for you here, girl. Does it look different in here? Got some walls up. What do you think? You got it at the point out there where you want it?
I'll try it up in there. That doesn't really matter. That'll be squared up when the whole thing's squared up. You can't really square it anyway. It's like this. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll have, that'll be squared up with the top plate. Thank you. Let's do the other end. is considered a red velvet ant and from what I've heard I've never been stung by one but they say that it's excruciating I believe they call them a cow killer <laughs> not something uh, you'd like to get stung by so from what I read the red velvet ant has one of the most painful insect stings or is one of the most painful insect stings in the world and rates a number three out of four four being the most painful not a bug you want to crawl up your pant leg <laughs> sorry bud you can't stay in here go on you gotta get down somehow I don't know how you're going to do it, but I'm sure you got up there, so it couldn't be too hard for you. <laughs> A pet? No. No more pets. We got enough pets. Go on, go on. It doesn't even care. He doesn't care. He's like, get out of my face. Go on, guy, you can't. Give me a, give me a stick so I can just persuade him. Give me that broom so I can just... No, the other one. One, that one. one. That's okay. Give me that one. He's like, oh, uh, my home. Yeah, he's like, what are you doing, bud? You're messing up my nest. Go on. Go on. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want you out of here. He's like, okay. I'm sorry, little guy, but you can't stay. You're being evicted. You can leave of your own accord, or else I can... Try not to get bit by you and uh, run you out of here. Okay, I'm being all cute. Yeah, a ring tail. Huh? Is he, he wants like to, he wants you, he's like, here, I can be your pet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen you feed squirrels. Would you feed me? Yeah. Still watching. Mm. So the way that I hung these walls ended up working out pretty well for me. I lifted every wall section with you know, sometimes three, sometimes four ratchet straps, pretty much by myself. You know, two people just be almost uh, too much, really, up on a ladder uh, operating the straps. The way that I braced them in just with some two befores like you see me doing there so they couldn't fall back and then I braced them to where they couldn't fall out and it ended up uh, being the way I done every one of them so 
worked pretty well. It was surprisingly easy to lift such a heavy wall into place, and this being the last wall, it was a tight fit for sure. So I removed really very little, just kind of beveled that edge a bit there and uh, cleaned off a couple humps that were in this wood. It wasn't finished particularly well, but let's see if it'll go in there now. There we go. That's all it took. If I have any problems, I can always knock it back out and clean it up a bit more. A lot of people would say that this doesn't fit. A toolmaker would probably say that it fits perfectly. So that's it, last walls installed. Now all I need to do is scoot all the walls out to the outside of the bottom of the seal because it's a little wider than the walls. Level these walls and I can start permanently attaching them. I can also pull down this tarp which is what the big blue one. And I'm excited about that. Uh, I was going to wait on it, but it's not needed anymore, really. I can still put it, attach it to the front of the seal to divert water away from the edge of the build until I get my gutters on and to keep the trench that I have uh, on the other side of this wall from filling up with water. But that's it, right? So let's pull this tarp down and scoot these walls out. It's exciting. So check that out. I know we got a bunch of stuff kind of in the way right now, but it looks pretty good. I'm excited about it for, for sure. Let's get these walls moved out. As long as that bubbles between the lines, I'm good with that. I mean, that's as good as it's going to be anyway. So I'm going to let this roof down, and then that, that's it, really. Then I can start fastening everything.
So because I have an excess of Tyvek or house wrap, I just decided to pull down these small sections that me and Al done and just do the whole wall as one. Just a better job that way. And this stuff's not that hard to put up, so I just decided to, that that'd probably be the best way to go. And the way that I made sure that this long wall was straight is I'd screw a screw into each end and then pull a string in between and then straighten them to the string. I did that at the top and I did that at the bottom along with, you know, level up and down. So worked out pretty good. And it looks good. If you look down at my eye, it's perfectly straight. Or <laughs> perfectly straight enough. And I'm pretty happy with it. So didn't show wrapping this thing back up. Not that exciting, actually. Why did I cut that wrong? Let's try this again. how good I got them gaps between wall sections. Don't look at this one. Just this part, the good part. So I think one of the most common uses for one of these electric hand planes, for a framer anyway, would be to knock down the studs, the ends of the studs that protrude out farther than the rest. So when you sheet this, uh, you don't have a lumpy surface uh, on, what the heck? Are you back? Uh, dude, you can't stay here. Oh my goodness. Well, before I do this, I gotta take care of this coon. Hey guy. You can't stay here. Sorry to let you inform you that. Just right at home, isn't it? You're messing all my stuff up. <laughs> So I got my Tyvek hung. I didn't show it, not all that exciting, right? To unroll this stuff up and staple it. And then I had a few options that, that I was aware of to mount this stuff on, uh, on the wall with. One, I could have bought a box of nails with the plastic caps on them. You know, that's pretty common. I see that used in a lot of 
or projects that I've drove by and noticed the little orange cap. Usually they're orange around here, plastic nails, just to hold this stuff on and keep it from blowing off uh, until it gets the, the final covering on it. And I was going to go that route, but I decided to buy this Arrow. It's a model HT50P stapler. It'll run several different size staples, basically for the same price, maybe $2 more. Uh, I got this stapler and the staples, otherwise I would have just had a bucket of nails. And in the future, I see far more use around here anyway for this tool than just a bucket of nails that'll sit in the attic once this shop's complete, right? So that was my choice on fastening up the uh, the Tyvek. I thought you know, it was good, better than the alternative, right? I'm going to lay a few pieces of this out, kind of let it fluff up a bit. Well, it probably wouldn't matter if I jam it right in the wall, but not a bad idea. I've got a lot of small places that I have to fill that I'll have to custom cut. This should go relatively quick. I'm not a big fan of messing with this stuff, though. It's definitely itchy. I'm just tucking the stuff in on the sides, pushing it in in the middle in order to not have any big voids in there. You know, I don't want it compressed and I don't want it smashed, you know, and not filling the whole cavity, right? So look away if you're squeamish. See how I hit that? I hit it up sideways like this with the back of the stapler. Lucky I didn't hit it up here and drive a staple into it. Split about to the center. <laughs> Almost. Uh, yeah. Didn't feel good. If you see Walnut, you tell him you better get his butt home. He's up to his same old shenanigans. So I'm going on a trip in my favorite rocket ship here, the old Chevy, to Lowe's. For those not familiar, that's a building supply store here in the States, that, or at least in the eastern part of the U.S., that sells building supplies, lumber, nails, etc. And I really enjoy going there. Quite, uh, quite content when I'm walking through the aisles there. Wallet cries a little every time I leave, but you know, hopefully this is my last trip for rough framing supplies anyway.
go on. You're going to get run over. I'll probably get run over if I don't get out of the road. mission this morning that the mom was going to work. A colleague of mine found a baby squirrel in their yard just meandering around a tree. Uh, she was concerned that the neighborhood cats would get it because she said that they probably would. And uh, she called all of the local shelters. None of them were taking baby squirrels or taking any more baby squirrels. It's that time of year, I guess, where people are finding them in their yard and, you know, these places uh, take them and, I guess, raise them and then turn them, turn them loose. But no one was taking them and then, you know, she could find no one else. So she had heard that me and Elizabeth had some experience with little squirrels. So she emailed me and I said, yes, please. So, introduce everybody to hazelnut. I'm not exactly for sure if this is a red squirrel or a gray squirrel. It's almost really a little early for me to tell anyway. Uh, it's definitely a her and she's got a lot of red in her. So I don't know. We'll see. She's awful cute. And she uh, she had fell out of a nest. Definitely not ready to be on her own yet. So the new addition to the family. What do you think, Elizabeth? <laughs> she's a cutie. Yeah, she's gonna be she's gonna be awesome. Once she gets all sorted out, she's she's recovering right now. All right, guys, I'm going to call the video here. It's getting too long. Insulation's all installed. You know, if you see one piece get installed, you've really seen it all. It's not that exciting to watch. But all of it's done, looking pretty good. Starting to sheet, and I should have this sheeted easily in the next day, and then we're going to start putting in windows, which I'm excited to do. I want to get this place closed in because I can feel the season change in the air, and it won't be long before it'll be cold, and I really want to work in the shop instead of on it, to be honest. Although I have enjoyed this project, uh, there, and there's still a ton to do, I'll look forward to getting it done. You can believe that. So I'm making a heavy push to make as much progress as possible. We're all extremely excited about the new member of the family, Hazelnut. What's the odds of three squirrels in a row? Just strange the way things work out, I guess. Um, you raise one up, it goes off, does its thing, and as soon as that happens, another one shows up, and so on. Uh, now we have hazelnut that we get to watch grow up and play in the trees around here. Um, I'm excited. We all are. So look forward to that. I, I know I am. So huge thanks to anybody who supported me on this project or just you know, my YouTube channel uh, in general. It allows me to take the time because it takes tons of time to put together a video like this. Most people would not believe it. 
but about two days for me to compile all my footage together from every week and then make a 30 minute video and that just wouldn't be possible uh, you know without the support of the viewers so I just want to say thank you um, we all thank you and that's it so, huge thanks to my viewers patrons and subscribers like I always say if you need anything send me an email click on my little guy to subscribe to the channel and that's it so thanks for watching guys I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.